Hey guys, this is a video um, to kind of showcase my Rhodesian collection. First, I wanted to give a little shout out to uh, someone to see and uh, Budman007. You were the guys that kind of inspired me to do this video for you and uh, anybody else that's interested in Rhodesian related uh, firearms and accessories. So, thanks guys. This video is for you and uh, hope you enjoy it. And anybody else that stumbles along this, I uh, hope it's informative. Um, first thing I want to show you is my, uh, this is a South African patrol pack. Uh, they came with four, they have a po you know, big, big pocket for whatever you need to put in there and then two um, mag pockets on either side that hold two each, so four mags total. Picked that up with these, with the magazines for about a hundred bucks a couple weeks ago. Um, these are, uh, these were uh, met inch pattern magazines that were converted over in Rhodesia to uh, metric. You can always tell they're inch pattern originally by the uh, by the floor plates, and um, they still have the, all the cam, pretty much most of the camo intact on these. This paint job, this paint was done in Rhodesia around. They started doing this around 76, 77. It was a kind of it was an order that where they were given. I uh, don't really know the specifics about why. Um, I've heard different things left and right about about it, but it's kind of cool, and it, and it also uh, signifies where, what the gun, what the gun or the magazine is. Um, this top rifle here is actually a. This is my uh, South African uh, slash Rhodesian parts kit I built uh, 2011. It's had well, it's had uh, well over 2,000 to 2,000 rounds fired through it. I love this gun to death. I wish 308 was more, was less expensive than it is, otherwise I'd shoot it a lot more. Um, originally, it didn't have the stock set on it. The stock set's actually going on um, a uh, another fowl that I'm building for my mom as a Christmas present, and uh, you've seen you've seen video of her in some of my other videos. Um, this stock set came from Apex Gun Parts in Colorado. I can't say enough good things about those guys. They've always helped me out in the past, and in this case, there was no exception. Um, it's a real nice uh, set. It's got about 99 to 97 to 99 percent of the camo intact, on, especially on the buttstock. And uh, if you look real carefully, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, it's actually got a um, Pretoria mark uh, stamp right there at the right underneath the sight, where the stock goes into the back of the uh, lower. Which is kind of uncommon because they had a tendency to hide to, to either remove those entirely or uh, they didn't put them on the ones that were given to Rhodesia because of the fact that they wanted to hide where they were coming from. But uh, stock sets, uh, stock set was real nice on it. Um, the lower is also part of uh, the second kit. This wasn't originally on mine. Uh, this one actually has a uh, it's a semi-auto selector. You can tell from the R. That was uh, completely ground down, so it could move from the uh, safe to semi to full. And for you guys that stumble on this video and don't know what it's about, no, just because it can move to a full auto position does not mean it can fire full auto. I'm telling you that now. Uh, like any like any semi auto gun, you have to do conversions to it in order to make it full auto. So just getting that out of the way. Um, this one's actually what's cool about this one is this one's actually uh, three digit stamped lower. Uh, the one that I was originally came with my kit was well into the six digits. To find one this early is kind of uncommon. And it's actually blue as opposed to paint over part. The other interesting thing about this one is that it's uh, it's actually matching on both the Rhodesian number and uh, the original factory number. The Rhodesians had a tendency to uh, uh, mark their, mark their uh, equipment with their own serial numbers to hide, again to hide where they came from, but um, to find these parts, any of these parts matching is is pretty uncommon. To find a completely matching parts kit is very rare. Uh, the last one I saw went for well over a thousand bucks, but this lower is actually matching on both numbers, which is pretty uncommon. So it was off to a pretty good start, and this is a you know this, I'm really happy about how this how this kit's coming along because. You know, I, I really wanted to do this something special for her, and it's actually I'm kind of a little envious because this one's actually blows mine out of the water. Um, but this is the upper that was originally on my gun, and uh, you can see there I even uh, broke the carry handle off as per what the Rhodesians did. And this lower is what was originally on my gun. Um, 
This is a uh, this is an R1 lower, so it's so well into the five six digit range. It's got a semi auto selector on it as well, but the other but what's interesting about it is it's got the uh, the original beak that kept it from going to full auto in place. And, and that, what they did was they cut off this little pin here, so again it would go into the full auto position. That's the other one that you uh, field modification that you'll see. And um, this one, these selectors are kind of uncommon now. They uh, they can go for a couple hundred bucks when you find them. This stock's actually uh, an original South African uh, wood stock that I found recently, about a, about six months ago. And um, this was the kit. This was the lower that was originally on that rifle. There, I like I said, I switched it out to show you guys. Um, but the uh, the kit's coming along pretty well. I've basically got it completed uh, as far as parts go. Um, just waiting for the receiver to get here in about a week's time. The uh, the gas plug is on mine. Is they do have them on the R ones, but they're not as common as say uh, these these uh, grenade gas plugs. Which you what you did is you flipped it around, and that would allow you to side in and shoot grenades. But um, you know these kits were about five or six years ago. You could get them all day long for under hundred bucks because they were kind of the bottom of the barrel. But with the barrel ban and the interest in Rhod in Rhodesia and the Rhodesian conflict and everything. The price on these has gone up a lot. Um, the second kit I had to basically piece together over time. But, uh, anywho, this is my uh, Rhodesian collection. Again, hope you guys liked it. And uh, if you have any questions, just leave them in uh, the comments below. And uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Anyway, have a good one.